Hi there. In this video, I want to take an image. In this case, I've got an image of uh, my office, and I want to make different parts of it clickable. Basically, I want to make a hot, uh, I want to make hot spots onto an image, or what's generally referred to as an image map. Now, I'm not going to be using traditional image map code, which actually involves a set of map tags with some various area tags. Instead, I'm going to create a CSS-based image map. So this is the image I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and start to set this up. Let me delete this image and I've got a blank web page here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a div. So I'm going to go to my insert menu, layout, I'm going to insert a div tag, and I'll just go ahead and call this div image map. So I now have a div. And I would like this div to be the same width and height as the image I'm ultimately going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new rule for my style sheets. And it's going to be for my image map. And I'll go to the box category and set the width to 640 by 480, which are the pixel dimensions of the image I'm going to be using. And actually that's pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it right at that. I'll click OK. So there's the div, so we can see it's kind of having this shape. Now the text up here isn't going to be essential, so I'm going to actually I'll leave that for just a moment too, just so you can really appreciate what's going to happen here. Let me go back into this rule that I just created for my image map. I'm going to head over to the background area, and I'm going to set the background image to the image of my office. So this is going to be the background image. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do a no repeat for the background since it doesn't really need to repeat. That wouldn't be a factor even if I didn't choose that though. And here we go. Now this looks a little different. It may seem like I just inserted an image on the web page, but instead the image is a background image for this div container. And I left that text on there and you can still, you can just kind of see it that this text is on top of that image. So pretty much anything you type here. is going to be on top of that image. And this is a good first step. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do, in fact I'm going to go ahead and delete this text, I really don't need it there, is I'm going to create a bulleted list. And this bulleted list is going to contain my link items that I want to have as part of this, what's really a navigation menu. So I'm going to go to my text category, my insert menu, create an unordered list, and I'll just put in a few things. Let's see, I see I have a yellow jacket, peace flags, old computer, bike helmet, and of course the actual bicycle. And I know it's tough to see, but this is a bulleted list, and I'm going to go ahead and select these items, and I'm going to make just some really dummy links out of it. Basically, I'm just going to do a, a link to a pound sign. And I'll do that for each of these. So if you ever just need to create a quick dummy link, you don't know, know where it needs to go, just link to a pound sign. Okay, so now I've got this, basically I've got a navigation menu inside of this div. Now I'm going to enhance it a little bit here. I've got these five list items inside of an unordered list. And let me go ahead and do a little bit of formatting. I'm going to create a new rule for the unordered list within my image map. Whenever you do these compound selectors, and that's really what I have here, even though the category isn't on compound, it's a compound selector, the unordered list within my image map. I'm going to choose OK for this, and I'm going to go to list, and I'm going to do a list style type none, and just kind of watch the bullets here as I click my apply button. See, the bullets are now gone. I'm going to go to the box category and I'm going to do zero padding and zero margin. And watch when I click apply, you'll see my list items jump all the way up the top left corner. There we go. So my unordered list is just really hugging the margins here. And so you can really appreciate what's happening. Let me go to uh, border and I'm going to put a solid medium red border on my unordered list. And when I click apply, 
then you can really see that my unordered list is taking up the full width of the div, but it's just not as tall as I might want. So let me head over to the box category, and for width I'll put in 640 by 480 and click Apply. Now I'm going to click OK. So this is my unordered list. Now I, I know you've noticed that it's probably overlapping here a little bit. It's overlapping, or my unordered list is going outside of my div, basically because of the thickness of this border. So that's a minor irritation, which I'll deal with for now. When I make this border invisible, hence zero pixels, that won't be a factor at all. Everything's going to behave really, really well. So my unordered list, more or less, is as big as the div with this background image. Now I need to work on my individual list items. Act, let's do this first. Before I even work on my individual list items, let me create a new rule, another compound selector, and this is going to be for the list items within my image map. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And just so you can really see what's happening here, let me go to border, and I'm going to do a solid medium and I'll do a bright green border so they kind of stand out a bit there we go so now we can really see these various list items and my goal for now is going to be to put these list items in very precise locations on top of this background image so I need to be able to uniquely identify each list item separately so that I can format the width and the height and the position for each list item separately I'm going to click on my first one here, my yellow jacket. I'm going to click on the LI tag in the tag selector. and I'm going to go to ID and I'll just go ahead and call this jacket. Then I'll go to my piece flags, click on the LI to ensure the list item is selected. Notice I'm not selecting the A or the anchor tag and I'm not selecting the unordered list tag. I'm getting the list item tag. This one I'll call flags, computer, list item, ID, computer, Helmet, list item, ID, helmet, bicycle, list item, ID, bicycle. Okay, those are all uniquely identified. Okay, now that it's really clear on where my five list items are, I can get to positioning them. Now I'm going to be positioning each of these five list items in very precise locations within this div or within this unordered list. My unordered list currently has this red border on it. It always seems to work best when you position absolutely within a relatively positioned container. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my unordered list. This is the rule for my unordered list. And I'm going to go to positioning and change position to relative. It's not going to have a noticeable effect on the page.